In occupied East Jerusalem, Israeli forces have blocked the entrance to the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound. Some worshippers prayed outside. Others who were trying to enter the compound were beaten by Israeli soldiers at the gate entrance. The Al-Aqsa compound is the third holiest site for Muslims. Since October the 7th, Israeli authorities have limited the number of people allowed in. Now, many Palestinians in occupied East Jerusalem fear Israeli restrictions will further ignite the conflict. Hamda Salhout reports. Preparations are underway for the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. In occupied East Jerusalem, Palestinians are making arrangements for their annual fast, but this year with even more hardship. The situation is getting worse. Each time it gets worse. God willing, Ramadan will pass without issues, come without restrictions. Of course it is getting worse. Us here in Jerusalem, we don't know what's coming. But fears of escalation in the conflict aren't the only thing on the minds of these Palestinians. These alleyways in the old city are typically filled with festive lights, but this year celebrations are muted in solidarity with Palestinians in Gaza, who are still under relentless Israeli attack. And the Al-Aqsa Mosque, Islam's third holiest site, and the focal flashpoint during the Muslim holy month, often plagued by Israeli restrictions and violence against Palestinians. Muslims fear Israeli forces will prevent them from attending Friday prayers and nightly tarawih prayers, services that are only held during Ramadan, when hundreds of thousands of Muslims normally attend. If there are restrictions, there will be a lot of problems. I'm sure of this. If someone like me is prevented from praying, this is something that won't be acceptable. At the very least, this is our right to pray here, and they are preventing us. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel won't restrict the amount of worshippers at Al-Aqsa for the first week, but that decision could change based on a weekly assessment. In previous years, Israeli forces have stormed the compound and attacked Palestinians, sometimes forcibly removing them to make way for visits by Jewish ultranationalists who seek to change the status quo that states prayers at the site are exclusive to Muslims. And this year, overshadowed by the war on Gaza, Palestinians are prepared for yet another Ramadan under occupation. Hamda Salhout, Al Jazeera, occupied East Jerusalem. Let's now speak to Hatem Bazian, who's lecturer in Middle Eastern languages and cultures at the University of California, Berkeley, and author of Palestine, it is something colonial. Thank you very much for joining us on Al Jazeera, uh, uh, Mr. Hatem. Uh, so the world is seeing probably more conflicts than ever before, from Sudan to Gaza, of course. What does Ramadan mean this year in the face of all this global uncertainty and conflict? Uh, for the American Muslim community uh, that has been mobilizing for the past uh, five months, uh, focusing on Gaza, but also uh, keeping an eye on Sudan and uh, expressing solidarity and sympathy, uh, we feel that a sense of trauma. Uh, most of the community is mobilizing for humanitarian relief, uh, for medical projects, uh, but also uh, trying to uh, put pressure on the Biden administration, on the American political leadership uh, that continue to give uh, Israel uh, literally open hand without any red line or limits. Mm. Uh, so this is really a traumatic uh, period, even though that people want to spend Ramadan to fast, to reflect, to, re to recite the Quran and open the mosque for services. Uh, but definitely, it is a very, very traumatic period uh, for the American Muslim community. Indeed, we've seen uh, American Muslims, those in the state of Michigan, for example, uh, express dissatisfaction with the Biden administration in the way it's handled uh, the war on Gaza. What is Ramadan going to be like? You know, in the past, we've seen the White House extend invitations to Muslims during the holy month of Ramadan. What is it going to be like this year? 
Well, I know for a fact from uh, my communication and discussions with the uh, broader Muslim leadership in the United States uh, that we're asking that uh, mosques should not welcome politicians who have not expressed uh, a demand or a call for immediate ceasefire uh, and anyone that continue to support Israel unconditionally by uh, using this euphemism of Israel having the right to defend itself. Uh, we're saying that uh, such political uh, figures are not welcome in the mosques. Uh, we're also, if uh, the Biden administration or the State Department or any of the major institutions are going to hold these annual iftars, uh, we're actually calling for people that uh, not to attend and not to show up, mm. uh, because we're not uh, for breaking the fast at a table that simultaneously continue to send Israel bombs. So we're not interested in a public relations photo op, uh, uh, iftars, whether in the White House or the State Department, we could do without right. uh, what we're asking the United States to say, immediate ceasefire and ending uh, U.S. military aid to Israel uh, immediately. Just looking at uh, the, the situation in Gaza more closely, Mr. Hatem, Israel has stopped pretty much most humanitarian aid deliveries. There is starvation, famine in the north. Um, and people today will have to make a choice between feeding their starving families or fasting. Just help us understand, for our international audience perhaps, what religion says about fasting in times of conflict or hardship. Well, the uh, Islamic law provides uh, the dispensation, or what we saw, say, ruhsa, that in times of hardship, you could break your fast. Uh, but in here, people want to express their uh, spiritual devotion. They want to fast. Uh, but simultaneously, Israel is having literally a genocidal policy by intentionally preventing food supplies, milk, medicine, uh, uh, basic necessities of life uh, to, to, to go to Gaza. So we're having 2.3 million people literally starving in front of our eyes. I would not be a person to say to the Gaza that you should ask an obligation right now to fast, but I know people will fast uh, considering the hardship that they're under. And we call for the United Nations, for the OIC, for all uh, international community agencies to demand uh, the opening of the borders. The supplies that we see, almost 2,000 trucks lining up on the Egyptian side of the border that have not been able to cross. The uh, various crossings from Israel where settlers are blocking the road for these supplies to come in. Uh, this is a preventable genocide if mm. there's such a notion of preventable genocide a hunger that is in front of us, and literally the international community is being impotent uh, from coming to the aid of the Palestinians for no other reason than they are Palestinians. Thank you so much for talking to us. Hatem Bazian, lecturer in Middle Eastern Languages and Cultures at the University of California, Berkeley. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.